friends. I am going to be doing a quick little video on the tacket method. And this is specifically for those who are um, learning the tacket method or haven't uh, have been struggle struggling with it or maybe want to give it a try because they don't have you know enough information about it to know whether they want to go into it or not. This is the one and only way that I do my my pens, whatever pen type I do. Um, my tumblers, I do it with my tumblers as well. It works for me because I use Crystalac. I'm soon going to be trying a brand new product, so this will be updated at some point. Um, and as we know, Crystalac is super thin. It's like a, a poly, it looks like a polycrylic, um, very watery. It's not as thin as water, but I mean, you see it, you get it. This is just a little squirt bottle. I get mine in a, in a quart can, so I don't want to keep opening that. I put it in a bottle, helps me flow it very easily. Um, so this product, as you can see, isn't thick like a resin, like a UV resin or a two-part epoxy. And it takes a lot of coats, a lot of coats. So over the, over the time that I've been using this, I've figured out how to get my pens to be as smooth as possible. Because if your pen is not smooth, be prepared to put a lot of these coats. And I'm talking like a dozen coats, not just a couple, a dozen. Um, so I am, uh, I've prepped three pens, these three pens and these three glitters that I'm going to be putting on them. So I've color matched uh, my pen color to the glitter. Half the pen is painted and half of it is white, as you can see, because I want you to see everything. This is like as clearest transparency as I can do on these pens. I also have my tacket. These two pens have been coated with tacket and this isn't. These are dry and ready to go and this needs to be done. So I left this one on purpose so you can see how I apply it. A lot of great advice in the groups, but a lot of conflicting advice in the groups. I'm not saying that this is the way to do it. I'm just saying this is how I do it and I have amazing success with it. So this is going to give you the the view of when you color match your glitter and why you should and when you don't color, color match your glitter and why you should. You're going to see it both on one pen. So first you take your tacket. Let me also say that I'm not sponsored by this video. Um, so you're going to see name brands here. I don't get anything from it. This is just the products that I use and uh, I use them because they work for me. If they work for you, that's great. If they don't work for you, that's fine too. Do what works for you. This just happens to work for me. You're going to see that there's like this little bite taken out of my pen. Uh, I got a little crazy with the Dremel when I was filing down the um, the clip. So I, I, I don't know what happened here, but this I'm going to keep this for myself. All these pens I'm going to strip back because clearly... Um, they're not going to be usable for, or sellable after I do them, but I'm, I'm going to do something with this and this will be my own. Um, also, these are the Amazon Basic Clicker Ballpoint Pens, um, not a gel pen. So you're going to see that they look a little different. They're not rounded over um, on the tip like the, the Ink Joys are. Uh, they're flat and flat on both ends and um, I love these ballpoint pens. So. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. So I'm going to just take my tacket and I'm going to, I just put a little line across it and then I'm, I'm good. Little art brushes, you go through these a ton so I don't invest a lot into these art brushes because between the 
the tacket and the glitter and the Mod Podge and the Crystal Lac, um, they, they get they get trashed. So uh, this is for me a nice line. I want a full coverage. As you can see, it's white. It looks like a Elmer's or it looks like a Mod Podge. The beauty of this is that once it dries, it's tacky and you can stick stuff to it without it being wet. So I start in the middle and I pull to the ends. I don't want a ton on the ends because as we know, it makes everything super bulky and chunky and we want thin, thin pens, which is another reason why I like this. So I'm just gonna pull this down across the pen. I want a nice, I cover it and then I just kind of even it out. And you can see that it's white. You can see it's hazy. And uh, so you're going to be able to see when it starts setting up because you'll start almost pulling it. And when it's dry, because it'll be clear and shiny. And this one's good. I'm just going to give it one more swipe. And I can feel that it's <clears throat> already getting tacky. And I'm just going to put that in some water and clean it off. And before it sets up completely, I'm going to show you the setup one. This is tacky and this is still wet, obviously, because we just put it on. So you're going to be able to tell which one is dry and which one is still wet. So I'm just going to put that in my holder and let it set up. I'm also going to just kind of say I had a lozenge in my mouth. My voice may come in and out. I'm still recovering from the damn COVID. Um, so just, uh, you know, bear with me. Sorry. I'm not contagious, just so you know. And I'm double vaxxed, boosted, the whole thing. Um, these sheets are my sublimation blowout sheets. I keep them, obviously, to do stuff on. This one here. I had to mix my paint to color match my glitter because I didn't have navy blue paint. So, you know, a light blue and a black navy blue, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to kind of get rid of that. Don't want it. Uh, so I also take these squares and I cut them down and I use these as my catch papers. They work really well for me. So, you know, reuse, reduce, recycle. I use these. I have a stack of them like just a, a little bin over there that I just toss these in after I've done a sublimation and these work great for my glitter catchers so why not so we're going to do three glitters I have a fine as you can see which I my opinion these are perfect for pens the circumference of the pen the surface of the pen is very small so when we add a big object to that little surface it really stands out so this blends in beautifully and then we have a medium or a larger cut glitter I use that okay, and then and ignore my Google Home she okay. reminds me to get up and leave my studio because I don't this is a, a, a chunky glitter so we're gonna use all three of these so you can also get the three different effects we're gonna start with the fine. Um, so the process to this is crazy simple. I'm just gonna, I always tilt my pen just to direct my glitter and I'm just gonna start, uh, I usually start around the end. I don't know why, it doesn't really matter. And I'm a tapper, I don't know why, but I'm gonna just tap and uh, let the glitter flow and spin my pen at the same time so it any extra is uh, gone away and already you can see why you color match your paint to your glitter and I'm just gonna go around it again just to make sure that we have everything on there all in fairness of you know this experiment or this little show and tell I guess so you can see just by adding the glitter, the paint color and the, the white background, you see this a lot. This white background is why people say, no, you have to add two, three, four coats of glitter when you use it. You're right, unless you color match your paint. 
So now this is your tool. This is the only thing that you need. And I take it and I just kind of swirl it around and let that glitter rub into that surface of the tacket. And again, you can see, at least I'm hoping that it shows up really well, where it's been rubbed in and where it's still sitting on top of the surface here. And when you rub on it, that glitter just lays down and gets in into the tacket surface and it's held on there. So I'm gonna continue on and just rub into the glitter and spin the pen and make sure that it's all, and you can feel it. This is smooth. It's very, very smooth. So I'm just gonna make sure that I rub everything off. I'm also catching all this glitter that's rubbing off because we're gonna reuse it. Now this is a nice, that, that's nice. This is called Magical Norwal. It's 100%, now all my glitters are also 100% saturated. So they're not color coded on the top with the silver core in the middle. People who sand their pens, run into that where all of a sudden their pink glitter is looking silver because they have glitter which is color coded on the top and not completely saturated through. So when you sand off the color, you're left with the pink core. These are all 100% polyester. They're, they're, they're colored right straight through. However, because I do it this way, I never sand my pen. I scuff my pen lightly before I put my my uh, paint coat on, but that's it. I never have to go in unless for some reason there's a really crazy little chunk sticking up, but I take my X-Acto knife and I just usually shave that back. Never have to sand, sand my pens. These are super smooth, super smooth. So that's this one, the super fine, which you can see here, I'm good to go. I don't have to do anything with that down here. I'm, if I just do this, I'm looking at probably three or three to five coats of glitter to cover this up. So that's number one. I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to gather up all this pretty glitter. We're good. Yeah, this is a Starcraft Magical Narwhal. And I just toss this when I'm done. So second pen I'm going to do is this medium, really iridescent purple. It's so pretty, really pretty. And I'm gonna put it on that purple pen that we tacked it at the first. And as you can see, you can see it's pulling when I touch it, it pulls a bit because it's tacky and it's dry. It's clear, I'm ready to go. So same process. Actually, I am, this is probably gonna overshoot. So I am gonna clean this because I'm probably gonna need to use that too. Because the bigger the glitter, the more it scatters. And the same process. I'm just gonna go ahead and, oops, lifting up my sheet. and work it down the pen. This is as big as the glitter as I'm comfortable putting on pens as a base glitter or an accent glitter. Um, it, you know, going back to what I had said at the first, pens have a small circumference or a small surface and this glitter takes up a lot of, the bigger the glitter, the more space it takes up on your pen. Now this alone, that's so pretty. And if I was doing the regular, you know, Mod Podge and then this, that's what I'm getting with. And now I've got to try and get all this glitter down or my pen's going to be really bulky because I have to layer all the epoxy on top of this to make that smooth. So I'm forcing, really I'm having the glitter work against me like that. So again, just take your little favorite tool and rub that glitter down 
knock off all the extra. I don't know if you can see the extra falling, but hopefully the camera's picking it up. And just continue on. And again, it's clear, clear how the color matching is a benefit. Now, with the super fine, we didn't have to do a second coat of glitter because that super fine glitter went in there and it filled it all in really well. With this here, we can see, depending on your final look, if this is a second coat of glitter over a super fine, this is, this is perfect. But if you want a completely saturated glitter, because we can tell by the white side of the pen that it's not all completely covered, but that's really good coverage, especially over the color match glitter or color match paint. So if I had a super fine coat and then this is my second kind of a pop coat, I wouldn't do anything more with it. But if this is my base coat, I would put another layer on that. Again, the rules are how you want your end result to look. That's the rule. There's no, oh no, you need to put two coats. You need to do this. You need to do whatever it does you need to do to achieve your final pen. So would I maybe, I don't know, it depends. Maybe I'm gonna put a washi over this or maybe I'm gonna put some vinyl and this is gonna be perfect for it. So it depends on what's the overall outlook of your pen. Again, this is nice and smooth. Because it's chunky, I'm feeling a little bit of an edge on this, but really it's fine. And again, we can clearly see why we color match our paint to our glitter. So that's the second size or a larger size chunk. Um, in the groups, when I'm helping answering questions, I see so many different terms. Um, I don't know how they all come to be. It doesn't really matter. It's just a larger size cut glitter. So. All of that gets put away. Now we go for the big boy. <clears throat> Sorry about that. This is a heart of the ocean and it's the most beautiful blue. And I like it on tumblers. I mean, it's just, it picks up so beautifully on, on tumblers as a, you know, a part of my top coat. And, uh, we're going to put this on a pen. This is this is a little scary for me. However, with chunky glitter, there's also, as you can see, just falling out of the cap, it's a blend of different glitters. So there is, you know, it's just for the sake of show and tell. Let's scatter this out a bit. You can see that there's small, like there's super fine, they're small and then the larger pieces in there. So the, all that little super fine is going to help really attach to your pen and provide a background for this as well. So it's going to help you out. But of course you want to see these big pieces. The big pieces are what's the hard part is. So I'm going to just get my glitter started again. I'm just going to start at the base. And I'm going to top around and spin. And yeah, keep going until I get it all filled in. But I think I have it filled in as much as I can. Give it a couple of taps so I can pull it out and I can show you. Look at all that glitter standing up. If you look at the edge profile of the pen, you can see all that glitter is really standing up. And this is where you'll get advice to say, oh, if you take wax paper and if you wrap around it and kind of press it down, it'll, they're right, it will. But again, you're working your glitter really hard, so. Let's give this a rub and we'll see what we come up with. And as you can see, it's just falling away. It's 
really, really shedding off there. And I'm not getting so much as the big super pieces as I am all those little filler pieces that were in there. So, make sure it's all off. fingers. So let's take a look at this. There are some super chunk pieces on there, but really that's probably not the look you were going for if you decided to use a chunky glitter. Um, so again, the color match, which I guess I'm off on the color match a little bit needed a little bit more blue in it but you know whatever for this experiment and then the white side again the point is just to show you how to that it's best to color match your glitter not a lot of chunky pieces on there I mean you could really spin this pen and count it now when you're using chunky glitter on a pen it's best to have it applied with your epoxy so that it will stick but your pen be prepared to have your pen be thicker you're going to have to work it more so the recommendations of wrapping the wax paper around it and pressing it down um, is is good advice because you need to get that glitter to lay down especially before you get into your finishes or you have to sand it and as we know, if we have something sticking up and if we sand it, we sand it off, we sand it away. So you're sanding away glitter, part, parts of glitter. So is, is that economical really? Or what is that overall look to have fragmented glitter on your, on your surface? So, um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions and discussion about that, but I will use these pieces of glitter as an accent. I have a few pens that I will do my glitter coat and then when I have my epoxy going on it, I'll drop, I just kind of dab with a toothpick and dab them on and place them how I want and make sure that they're nestled down into the epoxy as it's spinning. And it, it looks beautiful. It's a beautiful accent, just as an overall application. It's not something that um, I like to do. So I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna show you, I know that this was just the tacket, um, but since I have this going and I have you here, I'm gonna do a crystal act coating on a pen um, just just to show you I'm only gonna do one I'm only gonna do a little bit just so that you can see the flow and uh, this is gonna make a little bit of a mess so I'm gonna get all this out of the way my finger off because again I use my finger I'm going to I'm going to do this pen because this is the one that's broken I'm gonna strip these all down anyways but just to give you a show so we don't want to shake these up we don't want to generate air bubbles in our epoxy uh, so you got to use a torch or a heat gun and, and pop them up and, uh, you know, so you can see here that I can peel away, you know how poly will collect around your can and you can peel it up. This is pretty much the same type of, uh, situation. I use my bottle a few times, close it up, and then I just peel all of this away. And uh, cleans up nicely. You do want an airtight bottle because uh, you don't want 
air to get in there. This is not a two-part epoxy, meaning the hardener is already in this. So if you leave this open, it's going to start to solidify. Um, this type of epoxy is not meant for deep pores because when it's thick, this will not harden. This will stay liquid. So if I leave, if I put this in a cup, a little me measuring cup, after a couple of days, the top is going to have a harder, almost like a rubbery like surface, but underneath it, depending on how thick it is, if it's over an inch um, or half an inch, probably, uh, it's still going to be liquid. So that's why these are not recommended for deep pours. These are surface sealing applications only. If you need to do a deep pour, go with a two part resin. So very, very simply, I'm going to take this and this could be quick. I just put a couple of fine lines around the pen, spin the pen, keep it moving. And I just rub this back and forth and spin the pen at the same time. So I can feel the surface and I want it to be uh, the whole entire surface. I want it to be wet and that's it. That's one coat. This pen with this glitter is probably going to take me three coats before I can do, um, and I'm going to let this actually drip because you'll see, let me see if I can catch it on camera. Um, there it goes. It's going to fall there. Um, this is going to take about three coats before I can do a water slide or a washi tape or vinyl. We never put those on any surface unless it's super, super slick. Just so the entire, the hundred percent of your application is adhered or you're going to get lifting and all that crazy stuff that makes her all that stuff that makes us crazy. And, um, yeah, so after the vinyl, after washi or any, any sort of embellishment, I call, you're lo looking at maybe three more coats. So in total, a pen can be, let's say six to 10 coats, depending all on your glitter. Everything starts at your glitter. It's like trying to build a house on a cricket foundation and then opening and shutting a window. It's just not going to work. You can make it work, but you know, all that effort afterwards. So make sure your glitter coat is smooth and everything after that. And this is for your UV resin, for your two part epoxies. If your glitter coat is smooth, less product is used to make that glitter work for you. So there you have it. That's the Tacket method. Three different pens, or sorry, three different glitter types. Oh, I just rub my hand against, actually, I'm just gonna wipe it off because it's dripping anyways, getting all over me. Running down my pen wand, my little, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> so, three different glitters, super fine, a small chunk, a biggie, chunky, color matched, not color matched. I really, really hope this helps with your questions, your debates, whether you're wanting to uh, use the Tacket method or not. Um, I know that there's some people that advise to water this down, but as you can see, I did not. I had done watered down and I find that you need to put several coats because, well, you're reducing the tack and the amount of tacket that you're using. So I don't, I don't anymore. I just put a nice, even finish coat. I, I apply as much as I need. And this is all by feel. You're going to get that. Once you start doing it, you're going to get it. We're, we're, we're uh, artisans and crafters and we are dedicated to learning how to do what we need to do. So find out what works for you, for your end result, and then practice on it. And uh, if you're new to pens, go in your pen cup. You've got pens and pencils there that you probably haven't used for a long, long time. 
Use them. Don't expect to sell them, but use them to learn how to work your method and work your product. And then once you feel comfortable from that, then invest in your pens and uh, have fun. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.